All right, world, how are you doing? Welcome to the Spin the Wheel podcast with Eddie Johnston Bit. I hope you are doing well. I hope you're looking after yourself. Uh, I hope that everybody around you is doing well as well. Um, these are the kind of times that we are living in, thinking about the future and what might happen. Uh, no one can plan anything too far ahead. So in the meantime, uh, it's just me chatting to some people about some random stuff. How does it work? If you don't know, here it is. It's my spinny wheel. All we're going to do is going to give that a bit of a spin with a guest uh, and get them to answer some random questions. Who knows exactly what's going to happen? The guest today is Mr. Rich Huxley. Now, Rich is the guitarist from one of my favourite bands, so I'm really excited about this. It's a band called Hope and Social. If you don't know Hope and Social, I should hope that after this conversation, you might get to know Hope and Social. They're an amazing band, particularly amazing live. That might take a little while before we get round to that. However, they've got a bunch of stuff on YouTube, got a bunch of stuff online that you can find out about and get access to their music. Not only do they make great music, they're really, really entertaining. So this is bound to be a really great chat. Uh, Rich is a guy I've met a couple of times, um, don't know that well, so I'm interested to find out his answers to some of these questions. Depends what comes up, eh? Okay, are we ready for this? Let's spin the wheel. So, uh, joining me here on the Spin the Wheel podcast, I have the amazing, the wonderful muso, Mr. Richard Huxley from Hello, Open Social. Darling. How are you doing, buddy? You all right? All the best for seeing you. How are you? I'm very well, lovely. Very well. Um, good, good. A few basics to start off with, like we normally do, a few basic introductions. So, uh, guitarist for the band Hope and Social. Yep. Um, but also play, uh, hang on, uh, banjo. Bit of banjo, uh, ukulele, bit of ukulele, little, little bit of brass, little bit of glockenspiel, all the rest of that malarkey. Or... Yeah, I can play like four notes on a uh, excellent on a trombone. Obviously, there's the point that some people might not have seen Hope and Social. If you haven't Most seen Hope people. and Social, well, I, I mean, I'm I'm with this myself. Whenever I play a gig, it uh, has to be the thought of. Most people here don't have a clue what your songs are. Stop introducing <laughs> the new one. Anyway, uh, based up in Leeds, yeah, or that neck of the woods. Yeah, no, still very much in Leeds. Still Moved down much. a couple of years ago, but still Leeds. Yeah, definitely. Nice. Yeah. Um, and I first saw you guys, I believe, in about 2010, something along those lines. And one of my vivid memories of uh, the band was the fact that you had one of those trays that you used to sell ice cream. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. With the CDs on. And, first, and you came down to the front of the stage and just chatted to people and sold CDs off of this thing that I haven't seen since, like, Monty Python used it back in the day <laughs> uh, one of those you, you still still got that still hawk it around yeah. there yeah, yeah that's uh, <laughs> how's that book you've been working on yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, yeah yeah totally no that's a that's a definitely been a feature for however long because it's it's good to meet people and what better yeah. way than meeting people than like than taking something walking around and you know and there's always the jokes everyone's like oh can i get a love it shock ice nice albatross storm <laughs> special on a stick you know yes see we're still there so all those all those jokes are still available, but but then you're in a conversation with you know real human beings, yeah, and that's a very different prospect to going and seeing Muse, you know you well, don't get yes. to yes you don't tend no to. one gets to hang out with Tom York after you, the gig you don't uh, see Radio Matt Bellamy Hedgehog. hawking around yeah. his CDs off of an ice cream tray uh, certainly not Funny, we we once uh, we uh, years ago as a um, Three of us were in a band, called, three of Hope and Social were in a band called Four Day Ombre and we Four played Day, yeah, yeah. at um, Leeds Reading and we played this like cheeky little like backstage okay. artist's only yeah, I know. Yeah, I know them. gig and uh, and we were playing, as we were, as we were packing up, Muse were, um, were just finishing their set on the main stage. Yeah. But it was to the same loadout area. So as like as we're <laughs> as we're individually just like hawking amplifier after amplifier into the van, Matt Bellamy gets in his Rolls Royce. <laughs> we're like, this is not my beautiful house. <laughs> Le leaving his roadies to do all of the this. Is... <laughs> you might ask yourself, how yeah. did I get here? <laughs> Absolutely. Right. So we're going to crack on with this. Um, the thing is with you, we haven't spoken for a little while and I know we could probably do this between ourselves for some considerable amount of time. 
Well, the way I see it is, it's your job to try and keep me on track and my job to try to not let you. Absolutely. Well, the beauty of this um, thing is the fact that the wheel dictates exactly what's going to happen. Not a bad spin to start with. Oh, we've ended up on question number one, uh, which is uh, who most inspires you? Now, that can be any which way. You, all of these questions, you take them whichever way you want to go with them. It's entirely up to you and depends what kind of mood you're in. The kind of things that I'm now listening to and watching have expanded dramatically through this extended lockdown period. That's the beauty of Netflix. And I've got really into some nice little musical niches. Like, um, there's there's a band called Wintergarten. I don't know if you've okay. heard of them. Nope. Um, and... Uh, the guy, in fact, I'm, open, I'm not wearing the T-shirt. Let me show you. Hang on. So, <laughs> Martin, 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 is building this thing, which oh, wow. you may or may not be yeah, able no, to Yeah, no, I can see it now. So it's a marble machine, um, and or it's called Marble Machine, and it's essentially, it's, it's a musical instrument where the marbles land and hit the various bits. It involves, uh, it's got a vibraphone, it's got a drum, uh, like a drum section, and it's got a bass, all of which are played with marbles. Oh, marbles. And programmed with, well, the original one, there's a great video. If you look up Wintergarten uh, uh, Marble Machine, you'll find like the first video, it's been viewed millions of times. Yeah. And it's, just, it's a song. So they, it, there was a prototype built out of plywood and bits and that's beautiful and he the video exists of that and then for the past what seems like four years he's been building the new version which he hopes to tour and uh so yeah i've been really i've been really loving the development of that there's now a second channel on youtube winter garden 2 and okay. that's getting really like really dweeby into cad and uh fusion 360 <laughs> And uh, although I'm unwilling to go to the lengths that he is, it's really nice watching someone doing something brilliant and l like the process he's going through. And I'm very emotionally invested in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things I've always loved about your band is the fact that um, you kind of it's it's almost like with the guys that are there, you you have an idea and then it's like, right, I guess we're going in that direction then. And for that amount of time that you're doing that project, you, you kind of like, full steam into that particular direction and then you kind of come back to the middle and say well, what's happening next oh we're gonna go <laughs> over here then so whether it's like the garden party stuff or the stuff that you did with the the cafe and the the, the stuff that you did with the um like the bus trip you have these little strange little projects i say strange little projects i think they're amazing but you have these little projects that then take this inspiration and you just say right Let's push it and see how far we can go with it. So it's one of the things that I love about Hope and Social. That's, that, that, that's quite all right, mate. I could gush about your band quite a lot. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to try desperately to keep Fit. the fanboy uh, in, inside. Um, but uh, but just the fact that you take those ideas and, and you push them was certainly very inspirational for me in terms of the idea of, OK, you don't just have to say, let's do this, do that, do that, do this album and then or make these songs together and then do this you can actually have kind of like a concept for something or, or an idea for it, uh, which you can then take however far you want to, um, which has been really good to, to see on, on the, the website and the stuff you guys have been doing in lockdown as well. Yeah, I think when we became Hope and Social, like one of the first rules was like, we should only do the stuff that's fun. <laughs> because it, you know, well, if it's not going to pay the mortgage, uh, then we may as well do the fun stuff. Yeah, right. Which turned out to be the best financial decision we've ever made, really. But um, I mean, sometimes, you know, there's bits that we have to do that aren't necessarily the most fun. But generally yeah. speaking, I think that that drive has been uh, uh, has remained like we should only do things that that, you know, are either going to turn us on creatively or, yeah. you know, make us feel like a connection or, or make someone else feel great. Or, you know, we should only do this stuff that that feels good to do because you know if you're not if you're doing other stuff then it's just a job isn't it yeah absolutely and there's loads of just a jobs that pay much better <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah uh you are not wrong in that statement right next next spin i think let's let's mm. move on let's move on all right uh, i'm gonna go uh for a big one early doors uh second one tends to be quite big let's see what happens 
Oh, a little bit disappointing with that one. Really? It looks impressive from here. Okay, number 15. It says, where do you go to get away from it all? You could go with current situation if you want. It might be under the stairs. I don't know. Um, well, current situation. This room's a nice little safe haven, I have to be honest. I'm sat here. <laughs> Boom, I've got a keyboard. I've got my lovely speakers. I've got a lot of rock wool <laughs> making it sound <laughs> nice in here. Is there a door to separate you from the rest of the world as well? Well, down, yes, yeah, so the, the rest of the house is down there. And, and, you know, if I'm working up here and I get a bit tired, the bedroom's just over there. So it's, uh, so yeah, current situation. This is quite a nice little safe. Place. Okay, so so away from it, let's let's say for the fact the world opens up again and you can go anywhere you need to, whereabouts would would you be heading? Oh, it's a toughie, that. It is a toughie. I do often tend to think of those safe spaces as musical ones. Okay. So I'm really looking forward to going back to being in a studio and, uh, you know, with yeah. people I love. Yeah. Uh, best in the world, you know. You know, people think, may think that, you know, rock and roll might be glamorous. Just to be clear, if you've been in a van with, <laughs> not, with eight other people for 16 hours over the course of a weekend. I mean, right now, I'd, I'd snatch your hand off. Absolutely. Yeah, completely. Normally, usually after about an hour, everyone <laughs> needs to die. <laughs> yeah. But right now, can I'd you, love, to, can I'd love you imagine to be in a van. What? I'd love to be in a studio. I'd love to be on a stage. Can you imagine what those first journeys are going to be like? It'll be like, hey, we're going, we're, we're off again. We're, we're playing a gig in Hull or whatever. And then we'll have that. We'll have the same. It'll just be like, you'll have an hour. And then you'll be like, oh, it turns out right. everyone's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can completely understand where you're coming from. Those places are the places where you kind of get away. I think if it was me answering that question, it would be literally on a stage somewhere with people listening. That, that, yeah. That'll do. That'll do fine. Um, communing with people yeah completely in a performative manner <laughs> in a performative manner because Absolutely. of our egos well, <laughs> when you say that i couldn't possibly comment <laughs> i don't have my own sign <laughs> <laughs> mate this is what you do when you have too much time in lockdown <laughs> this is number two it says what do you consider your biggest success or triumph and we're taking kids off the table here. Okay, you, you are allowed to say something other than, oh, yeah, my children. That, that's just, I'm not having it. It's funny you'd say that. Uh, uh, I don't know if this is, oh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what to class as a success or a triumph. Like, Well, that's the first, that's the first part of the thing, isn't it? Um, like the stuff that we've, that, that musically we've done with Open Social, which has been, you know, the kind of thing that looks good on a CV. Yeah. So... But uh, but yeah, in terms of taking children to the table, one of those was um, in 2014. We did a, uh, we did a thing called the Tour of Infinite Possibility. Yes. Um, as mentioned, we've liked to do things in the past where we involve people in what we do, and this was the biggest one of those. So over the course of like two, three months or something, like ten weeks, twelve weeks, yeah, we taught uh, 1,500 people to play with us. And to do a gig with us in their town to, you know, to their people, really. So we had like every gig, we'd have like 100, 110 people on stage with us Amazing. at least once. They'd all be on for at least one song at the end. And so, yeah, at the end of that project where we taught all those people to play, we were asked to open the opening ceremony at Leeds Arena, which was amazing. Yeah. Like the just the best fun. You know, one song, bit stingy, give us a load. But I know. it was really, really, it, like, it was just loads of fun. And also, say, if anyone hasn't seen it, it is on YouTube. You can see it. And the yeah, Roller Derby great. It. The yeah, Roller yeah. Derby girls are great. Uh, love <laughs> yeah. it. Absolutely love it. Yes, they were great. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, so I got a text off my wife, Hannah, um, at, like, after that, before we'd kind of got out and got to the after party shenanigans yeah and it's and it was just it was just gushing and like i've never been so proud in my life i was like darling like we had a kid like just a couple of months back <laughs> amazing 
So I'm not sure if that'd be my proudest or you know biggest success. I don't know. There's lots of there's lots of lots of things in there. There's lots of things. Well, but that's that the was, thing, isn't it? It's when you that when was quite you a shiny to... thing, mate. It, that that was awesome. I absolutely loved the whole shindig behind it. And um, again, being a fan and and kind of watching uh, the band's adventures fr- from afar, um, it's quite. It's one of those things that you look at and go, oh, I wish I'd been there. I wish I'd been involved in it because it was it was um, absolutely fantastic from from my perspective. Um, but I guess it's it's one of those things as well because of the fact that it's Leeds Arena. I, I can understand why that reaches right up there when you first start thinking of those kind of things. That was giggles. It was good giggles. It was. Yeah. It's a little bit more than just you know getting your cycling proficiency in it. It's a it's a little bit beyond. <laughs> Beyond that, yeah, it's been so many things. Like we got, you know, we've got to do Glastonbury, and we've got yeah. to, and like as as Forty Ombre, we got to license our record out in Canada. We got to record in our dream studio in France. We got to play in New York and make an album in a day. We got to go to San Francisco and LA. You know, there's been lots and lots of things. Yeah, and sometimes like it's the dinky things, like people who've started their own open mic night as a result of being involved in stuff, and like awesome. they're. They're equally big wins for me. You know, when you're dead, it's nice to think you've had a bit of an influence in it. <laughs> there you we go. met a guy in Skipton on Ed's birthday one time and he was like, oh, we did this thing with you and now we we came to your studio and we did a recording and now we've started renting a space and it's like a musician's co-op and we're recording bands and, you know. And well, I know. I know that for, that's equally as good. Yeah, for, yes. for me, one of the, um, I think about memories that I've got and memories that I've got with my kids was when you came and, and, and did uh, Greenbelt Festival uh, with the band that anyone can join. The three of us came and did the rehearsals and joined with your band. So as for me, as a parent, having that memory of being on stage with my kids isn't something you're going to get very often. Yeah. Um, so, which is something we obviously have Hope and Social to thank for. So, th- that was a real positive memory for me. And th- these are due to. Uh, I know, I know, we're going there. But um, these are due to the kind of strange, bizarre ideas that you lot come up with and um, and people really take on board and, and go along with. I guess, like, historically speaking, you know, getting people doing things together or that kind of troubadour type. Mm. You know, we go to a place, we involve people in what we... It's not... I don't know, like, it's just not commonplace for band bands. Yeah. And I don't know why. Like, there's this gulf that people want to put between stars and audience. And, you know, since ever I've been involved in anything musical, it's been about bringing people together, not going, all right, we must stay here and audience lives over here. Like... Yeah, it's it's, it's stopping that gulf, isn't it? Yeah, no, completely. Which is why when you've got bands like um, like people like Ozzy Matley who come mm. off a stage and come into the crowd and they have their samba circle and stuff, it's one of the reasons why they connect so well with their audiences, isn't it? It's that absolutely. It's that whole thing of we're we're all in this together. We're all having a really good time together. It's, it's we're all in this us. together. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that. There's somewhere. a song about the song. It was somewhere. less convincing when I heard it last time. <laughs> Okay, hold on a second for me, Rich. Does this one involve a, a mime? <laughs> no, it involves a ukulele. This question is really simple. It goes, which one's your favourite? Which one's your favourite? Which one's your favourite, Hob? Which one's your favourite? Which one's your favourite? Which one's your favourite, Hob? So that's that. Um, Back right. Oh, really? Yeah. Is it's, it? a bit, it's a bigger one. Ah. So of the, we've got five. Oh, you've got a five hobber. Yeah. Okay. So back right is a full size one. Yeah. Uh, as is front left. But you prefer back right. Well, it's safer, isn't it? It's kids. Ah, it? you've got kids. Less handles and you know little kids the in the house. See, that makes I a whole lot more sense. I've had so many discussions with people about this this concept, um, and that actually makes complete sense to have further away from small. Prying hands. Yes, but further away from the scalding. Yeah. See, I'd always go front left. Uh, I'd always go front left, but I guess I've what's got... Your, a, how big, what size is your front left? Well, it's it's a, it's a, the biggest of the hobs. Uh, and it, he's, he's front left. And then 
the the one I use the least is actually the back right. That's our little one. That's the that's the, that's the tiny one there. So yeah, um, well, it's it's good to get other people's opinions uh, on all kinds of things. Uh, Even I'm that. Gl- I'm glad we touched on that important subject matter. Solved. This next one, a little bit different. I'm just gonna find which one I want. To, uh, uh, let's go there. Okay, number eighteen. Tell me about your first car. Ah, oh, Teddy. What? Teddy was my favourite car. T E T four fifty Y. Okay. And Teddy was a baked bean coloured um, Ford Escort, and it was yeah, it was my first foray out into. Was it was Freedom. it was it banged up and knackered or was it? Um, well, it looked apart. It looked. I mean, like apart from the fact that it was a baked bean coloured white red Ford Escort. Yeah. Apart from that, you know, it looked all right. It drove all right. We I did uh, gig after gig after gig after gig in it. Went nice. Got, got a tow bar fitted on it. Had a trailer. <laughs> it was ace, and we used to love it. We used to also cut. It was called Teddy, or it was also called BP, as in uh, drive my car. Okay. Uh, beep, beep, nice. beep, beep, yeah. Beep, yeah. Um, uh, it had a long wave radio in it. Nice. And it was just, it, yeah, it was great. It was that, that first foray into into um, freedom so, and into into gigging. What choice and, uh, of tunes were you able to to get on your? I think your... it was at that stage. I think it was still a bit of Atlantic two five two. Nice. Um, and yeah, I went to get it MOT'd after that first year. Yeah. And the garage went. This is a bad car. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to die. <laughs> so it lasted a year, but it was a great year. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Nice. And whereabouts uh, are you gigging that kind of time? I squared the wheel on it once, like driving it through, uh, driving it through like at, uh, Southport. I used to live near. Okay. So I used to go to college in Southport and we used to, when it all flooded up there, I was driving it round the roundabout. And I just ha, like, just for giggles, just... You know, just carnage, carnage in it. You know, you think you're invincible, yeah, when you're that age. And uh, yeah, no, it was a good car though. Once got pulled by the police. I used to go out with a girl in Formby, yeah, and it was coming up to uh, Valentine's Day, I think. And I bought uh, some um, some undergarments. Nice. And I got I I didn't get done for speeding, but I did get pulled because I had been seen to be speeding, but they'd not recorded my speed. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had the policeman like coming in, shining it in the back of the car, and, and just being good, like a Basque sussies. <laughs> oh, <amazing. laughs> so I've got a lot, I've got a lot of love. But I was, where was where was I playing? I was playing in um, I was based in Southport, so we used to do a lot of stuff around the northwest. Yeah, kind of down as far as even Stoke, maybe. Okay, a lot of Manchester stuff. So you said that was you at college. Um, so yeah, are you Yorkshire boy originally? No, no, no. I'm I'm Liverpool originally. Brought up in Magull, which is near Ormskirk. You might okay. have heard of Ormskirk. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's kind of between Southport and Liverpool, but not on the coast, inland a bit. And uh, yes, yeah, so, so that was there. that was formative years playing guitar in bands and pubs and all the rest of that kind of stuff. Or yeah, first band was my uncle's sixties band. Liverpool band playing Beatles songs. Oh, I mean, you can't really go too wrong with that it one. It was great. Yeah, it was really great. And then when I was 17, I started the, like the covers duo. Mm-hmm. Junk Mail. Nice. Uh, and, uh, and we did loads of stuff. Yeah. Like loads and loads of, loads of gear. Did you not find that. with a name like that, that you put your flyer through someone's door and they would just screw it and throw it away? Arf. Thank you. <laughs> These are the jokes, folks. Really, oh, yes. uh, it's nice to say I don't. Hope you've got some more far. questions. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go one more. Let's go one more. See what we got. If you could make a support bubble for a current celebrity, who would it be? So what? Do you, which way around do you mean? Do you mean like a celebrity that you think needs a support bubble? Not po- or possibly. Do you mean, but or do you mean a celebrity that you would like to bubble with? Yeah, let's let's. Well, I mean, are they are they different? Um, are they different ideas? Well, I don't know who's. I don't like. Let, okay, one let, is one is like my fun. Yeah, and one is 
caring for them. Let's, like, let's take away the concept of having to look after the vulnerable. Okay, we presume <laughs> that someone else is doing that. Um, we'll just do the fun bit. So, uh, oh, I don't, ooh, okay. Because I was going to if it was the other one, I guess my first protocol is like, I want to make sure that Dame Judy Dench is all right. I mean, that's, that's a fair shout. Yeah. And I want to make sure that Sir David's had his, yeah. had his injection. <laughs> He's got to have by now, surely. He surely, must be yeah. so, so high on that list. If they've done Boris Johnson's dad before him, then we need <laughs> There's to, something wrong in there. We need to have a revolution. <laughs> uh, uh, selfishly, oh, a celebrity I'd like to bubble with, selfishly. I mean, what if it was, what if it was all the characters from Teen Titans? Because <laughs> that, that serves a lot of purposes. It's comedy for the adults. It's entertainment for the kids. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, to be fair, when I set these questions, I've got a vague idea of the kind of things that people might go with. Wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Teen Titans is great. Teen Titans is basically... Uh, We're talking about the cartoon, right? Yeah, the kids' cartoon, Teen as Titans. A, as opposed to the Titans, Netflix, slightly dark. You don't want them in your house. Uh, I guarantee oh, you that actually, much. I might have changed my mind. Oh, go it's, on. Uh, yeah, uh, 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 who plays Iron Man? Uh, Robert Downey Jr., Get me in the house with Robert Downey Jr. That's what I want. <laughs> uh, okay. We, I mean, slight slight change. but uh, Same, same, but different, really. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's an entertaining man, right? I, th- I just think it'd be nice. Yeah, like, I think it'd be fun he to stri- like He strikes me as the kind of person that um, he probably doesn't need the script that he gets uh, in order to do that kind of stuff. But then again, aside from being Iron Man, have you ever seen Robert Downey Jr. in a role that you really liked? Uh, well, I'm biased. I think I do. I think just oh, yeah. think I like him. That's perfectly fair. Uh, we, so we, we, I thought he was good in the Sherlock stuff as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, I can see that. Did have you seen? Have you seen Doolittle? I, I think I have. I don't think I connected really particularly with that. Yeah, it's not his finest work, to be fair. But but I've I think I've been like obviously he's, he has been a mess. But nevertheless, that can often lead to really good stories. Like, I like the Absolutely. fact that he got done. I can't remember which hotel it was. A hotel in New York when he, when yeah, he got yeah. busted. And when the... I, I believe the story is that when he got busted, it was him on his own, dressed as Wonder Woman, just bezzing around the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like... Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't think I could be b- asked with that kind of level of bullshit these days. But there is a time when that would have been really exciting. <laughs> And if you're going to have someone to hang out with, you may as well have someone that you think you're going to have a good laugh with, right? Yeah, I think that'd be fun. We've come to the end of our spins. So that's the wheel <laughs> spun for this podcast. Um, Hux, how was it for you? I had a really lovely time. I think we should do it every Friday. <laughs> well, I might just need to uh, get in touch with some of your bandmates uh, at some stage and, and maybe have a chat with some of them. Um, in the meantime... I know we are a little bit stuck in terms of where we are and what we're up to, but have you got anything to plug? Uh, and also, how can people find out about you and what you and the guys are up to online? Uh, stuff to plug. So, uh, uh, I mean, Hope and Social, we have an EP out that was recorded in lockdown um, and a whole raft of music um, available from hopeandsocial.co.uk um, or .com. Don't matter. It'll get you all to the same place. Nice. Um, everything we do is pay what you want. So, you know, enter a zero. Try it out. If you like it, drop a few pennies in the tin. If you don't, hey, it was digital. Didn't cost us anything. <laughs> Delete it from your hard drive. Everyone's a winner. Um, uh, I run stuff that people can get involved in on a Monday night and on a Wednesday night. If you have an instrument that you would like to dust down and be involved in some online sessions... Um, then you can email me directly from uh, richhuxley.com uh, or you can search for music from the attic. You'd be very welcome. Seven till nine Mondays nice. uh, and half an hour earlier on a Wednesdays. Champion. Hux, it's been an absolute pleasure having you. Um, thank you for spinning the wheel. Keep on doing all the good stuff. Love you. And that was the Spin the Wheel podcast for this week. Thanks very much for listening. I hope you really enjoyed it. I certainly had a great time. 
chatting to Rich. I hope you picked up on some of his things. Uh, and if you haven't heard Hope and Social yet, then I hope this has maybe whetted the appetite a little for you to go and find out. Hopeandsocial.com. You can find out all the stuff about them and what they're up to um, in current times and obviously planning for future when they can get back out live and actually playing on stages again. Uh, can't wait. That's going to be great. If you enjoyed it today, don't forget, click, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Pass it on to a bunch of people uh, that you think might like this kind of nonsense as well. And I'll be back next time to spin the wheel. See you again. Ta-da now.